Is there a competition among puppeteers in terms of technical feats, so to speak? Oh, I, I don't think so. I mean, I know puppeteers who, who do a cabaret style work and uh, variety work who do a lot of tricks and they're so brilliant at it. In fact, when I was doing Billy Twinkle, I needed some trick puppets for Billy to perform and they were really generous. Showing There was one old guy who was one of the last few people who knew how to do the strip act with a marionette and I went down and you know, a few years ago, an 80-year-old puppeteer in L.A. showed me how to do the strip act. So I felt like I was 12 years old wow. again, you know. And, uh, Are these and up, uh, secrets, like magicians have their own secrets? Kind of, you know, but a lot of it's in books, too. Right. But a lot of that stuff, I, you know, my mind works better if you just show me. Um, right. And, and plus there's the thrill of having a guy show it to you. You know, another guy showed me how to do, how he did his facial animation and, uh, uh, took the back of the puppet head off and went like that. And I went, oh, I get it. So um, I don't find that, I find that the best puppeteers aren't secretive because right. they figured out that technique is not what makes you unique. Well, there's a good quote, right? It's, it's the idea. It's what are you doing with that thing, you know? And so uh, my buddies are pretty generous in terms of, sharing info. I'm pretty generous. But in info. Billy Twinkle, there was the moment where the marionette manipulated the marionette that manipulated the marionette, was there not? No, it was me working a puppet, working a it puppet. It was three. Yeah. That had my jaw on the floor. Not only of the magic of the metaphor of it, because the metaphor power doubled, but how do you do that? The technique of it, I went, how does he do that? Well, it's pretty easy, actually. <laughs> Say that. No, it is. I mean, if you think about it, you just make a miniature puppet and put it in the puppet's hand and jiggle it. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, people have done that before. Okay. But okay. being me, I had to do it seven times in the <laughs> twinkle, and then I had to have a guy working two, you know, right. for the taming of the moon thing. Um, and you know, I do try and put some little tricks in every show. My favorite moment uh, of the last decade, maybe, was in 10 Days on Earth. At the beginning of the show, an old woman crosses the stage and then she walks back again silently, takes off her slippers and leaves. And the slippers are so central to the story of, of that, about she goes to her bedroom to die, and it's about her middle-aged, intellectually disabled son talking to her slippers, thinking she's in mm -hmm. the bedroom. So it's powerful, those slippers. There's a reason for them to be there. But when, she, when that puppet physically took off her slippers and walked barefoot off stage, there were a few nights where I'd hear people go, oh, and I was like, yeah, you just got that. That was really hard. <laughs> but I'm not I interested know. in doing Wait. tricks for the sake of tricks. I have to, you know, there's a moment in this show where a puppet picks up a pillow and smothers another puppet, which is a trick I really like and I nail 95% of the time. There are a few nights when I can't pick up the damn pillow. But when I do that, I think the audience doesn't really notice the technique because it's so shocking that this character is killing her mother. It's, you know, that's what's going on. <laughs> so I'm more interested in using a trick that's part of the story right. that propels us somewhere.